Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Atlanta Business Radio. Brought to you by OnPay. Built in Atlanta, OnPay is the top rated payroll and HR software anywhere. Get one month free at OnPay.com. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of Atlanta Business Radio, and this is going to be a good one. But before we get started, it's important to recognize our sponsor, OnPay. Without them, we couldn't be sharing these stories. Today on Atlanta Business Radio, we have Matt Stevens with Centegix. Welcome, Matt. Hey, Lee. Thanks for having me. Well, before we get too far into things, tell us what you're up to. How are you serving folks? Yeah, well, we exist to innovate technology to save and enrich lives, uh, predominantly in the K-12 education system as well as hospitality and healthcare. So certainly a lot of uh, industry verticals that have been disrupted recent by recent events. And we, you know, we continue to um, deploy our systems and then innovate new technologies in order to not only fight against the COVID-19, um, but really against you know, disruptions and physical altercations and other things that disrupt pub- public places. So um, can you tell us a little bit about the backstory? How did this uh, go from idea into implementation? Yeah, well, let me talk about, you know, both of our primary product lines. One, Crisis Alert, which really was born out of the Parkland event. If you remember the, you know, the shootings in, in Parkland, you know, what we found, we had we were servicing the K-12 market um, prior to that. But, you know, after Parkland, administrators really they, the, all they wanted to talk about was technology solutions to solve active shooter problems. And, you know, we looked around and nothing existed in the market. So uh, we had the audacious goal to build something that ultimately could be used to save lives. And what we found was, you know, that product um, really, you know, it, the distribution of that product really happened very quickly once we went to GA. So, you know, we protect about a million kids across 10 different states with our crisis alert products, a wearable panic alarm that empowers anybody with a simple push of a button to be able to call for help anywhere in a school campus, indoor or outdoor. So no dead spots associated with Wi-Fi or, or uh, you know, no multi-function necessity like you would have with a mobile application. It's a purpose-built tool. You know, we deploy a private safety and security network for each of our customers when we uh, when we begin to protect their, you know, the people in their facility. And after COVID came about and the, the you know, talk turned really to what are we doing Our customers were asking the question, what are we doing to help protect or help bring people back to school safely? You know, contact tracing became um, the the next real big problem. And because we have not only a locationing network, but a communications network, we realized that we could use that same technology to, um, to help fight against COVID with contact tracing. And that's our contact alert product. So then how does that work within the school? Yeah, you know, we, we call it um, spatial temporal notificationing. So what happens is when two people are within proximity for a sufficient amount of time. So if you look at the latest CDC guidance, I believe is, you know, six feet for 15 minutes, there's an enhanced chance of exposure if one of those two parties has, uh, you know, has COVID. Um, and what our system does then is track the, the the locationing of two folks when they come into proximity with one another. And we have the ability then to notify if a positive case of COVID then is identified, we can find out in retrospect who have they've been sufficiently in contact with for a period of time that may um, that may then produce a you know other further positive results. So does that require every student to have some sort of a sensor device? Yeah, we're actually not doing it at the student level right now. We're doing it at a faculty and administrator level and um, are exploring the the possibility of bringing that technology down to the student level. Um, For privacy and safety reasons, we don't do it currently at the student level, but something that we're exploring. So now... um, is this something that is actually being in use right now, or is this something on the drawing board? Yeah, we're in the prototype phase of the technology. And again, we're, we're repurposing existing technologies that we're deploying. Um, but we're, you know, we, we are moving through a, 
you know, prototyping and then a, a, a beta technology phase with contact alert as a product. Now, when you're working in this industry, especially in the school system, there's so much bureaucracy. How do you typically kind of go to market? Is it something you have to kind of pilot somewhere and then get approval and then you can roll it out maybe throughout the school system? Yeah, you know, I think the, there's been a lot of disruption in the way that K-12 and in the way the public sector has purchased technologies in response to um, in response to this. And, you know, as technologists, we've constantly pushed the edge on you know, rapid innovation. And I think that customers really are helping to drive the rapid adoption now. You know, we don't, they can't follow their typical, if, if there's any hope of opening schools back up, they can't follow a typical annual procurement cycle. So there really are, you know, especially our more, you know, what I'd call our more um, thought forward customers and prospects really are leading the conversation. So now um, when you're working in this kind of a space for you, um, is the, is solving the problem, the fun part, or is it uh, knowing you're helping all these keep people safe? Like what, what's the part that gets you fired up? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure that I'd describe any of it as fun, uh, you know, either for crisis alert or contact alert. The reality is, you know, we understand when we go to work every day that, you know, the lives that we could be saving uh, very well, maybe our own children. You know, I've got three kids and in, in school and, um, you know, it's a very serious business, both, you know, active shooter or, you know, physical altercations in schools. And we see that increasingly in an in increasingly violent society. So I'm not sure that I'd classify it as fun. What I will say is, you know, the number one reason people come to or stay at Centegix is because of our mission. So we're very missionally aligned and, and folks really do appreciate that about, um, about us as a company. And it's part of what attracts people and part of, uh, part of our retention strategy. We know that, you know, we're technologists, we're not healthcare professionals or law enforcement professionals. We can't solve the problem on that side, but we can deploy great technologies ultimately to save lives. And when you're out in the world, has anything uh, come about where Centegix has saved lives or is it something more preventative at this point? Yeah, no, we, we, we hear stories routinely and our system has been used over 25,000 times in our deployed customer base. And that's for everything from, you know, it could be a child choking on food in the cafeteria to a compound fracture out on a sports field to a, you know, a, a fight in a hallway. And we've actually have responded now to um, three gun incidences. Um, all of that data, of course, you know, we can't talk very specifically about it because it does involve uh, minor children, but we do have real world examples of our system being used to save lives in both kinetic incidents and then in medical incidents as well. So now in the way that, it, uh, can you share like, so what happens? So the, uh, a teacher has the device and then has senses a, a crisis, it presses the button. And then what, then what happens once they press the button? Yeah, exactly. So first responders are notified and those first responders typically are, you know, it, both there's internal and external first responders that depends on the severity of the event. So, you know, let's talk about your um, run-of-the-mill fight in a in a high school. You know, if a teacher comes upon that and they're by themselves and there's a gathering group and a physical altercation between two students, they simply press the button on the wearable IoT device that they carry with them. First responders are notified both in a SaaS desktop application and then through a mobile application. And that teacher then knows that they have help coming immediately. So those um, those on-site first responders show up, and that typically is, you know, the principal and vice principals, maybe, um, you know, the coaches or some other set of responders. And then for an escalated event where there's a broader campus-wide threat, and this could be, you know, we live in the southeast, this could be, uh, you know, a tornado coming at you know, an entire county and jeopardizing multiple schools. This is a real world event that our system was used for a weather sheltering event. So, you know, at that broader level than first responders outside the facility, and that could be EMS, um, you know, police, fire, medical that are notified and bring the, you know, bring the appropriate response for the appropriate level of threat. So now on the device itself, if I'm a teacher somewhere and there's a tornado and somebody's um, knows that they press the button and then I'm notified on my device that there's a tornado? 
Yeah, so a little bit different than that. You know, when you're talking about broad campus-wide threats like that, um, perhaps weather or, you know, bomb threats or things like that that sometimes happen in public facilities. And again, you know, we deploy more in, into more than just K-12 environments. We've got some government facilities and hotels as part of our 1,200 installed customer sites. Um, that typically comes through a mobile application notification or through the desktop client. So for our bigger customers, say, for instance, you know, um, multi-school districts, you know, we have customers that have as many as uh, 300 sites on that. And for those uh, customers, they typically have a command center or an, an operations center that's monitoring severe weather and other events like that, social media feeds for, you know, broader threats. And they would then issue the security alert for that. Typically, that's not done at the teacher level. That's done up at the administration or at the security professional level. And then so what what's next for you? Um, you know, the ability to pivot into COVID, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, let's just hope the rate of change uh, happens to slow down as a result of things coming back to some sense of normalcy. You know, we, we really we're starting to deploy into more next for us is deploying into more spaces. So we actually view ourselves not as the protectors just of K-12 kids, but of all public spaces. And I think the question is, you know, where do you go that uh, that has an opportunity both for violence or for natural uh, disasters to spread? And, you know, so we're expanding additional market opportunities. You know, healthcare is a big focus for us right now. Um, and that includes, you know, both behavioral care centers, um, p- potentially chemical dependency and treatment centers, anywhere that there's a small number of staff and a larger population that potentially um, could experience, you know, acts of violence, whether, again, man-made or nature-made. And then um, when a, a group decides to partner with you in this way, is this something that uh, the, the training is included? Like, how do you kind of um, onboard the folks to get them to use it and keep it with them and to actually, you know, kind of, uh, is there a learning curve with this? Yeah. Well, we try to be very easy to do business with. And one of the things that we recognize, again, because of the the market that we serve and the, the type of incidents we're responding to, is we have to rely really on gross motor skills. And that's baked all the way into our product design. So super easy to use. They are t- our, one of our mantras is push button help comes. And, you know, training is almost that simple for the folks who are simply end users of our systems. You know, for the administrators of our systems, it's a little more complicated, but we have a very concierge-based system that gives not only um, live training to, you know, those who will train and deploy within our our customer base, um, but refreshers and video tutorials that we send out periodically. So we really do strive to be easy to do business with, easy to adopt our technology, and easy to use because, frankly, in any incident, every second matters. And it's important that we're very easy to use when a crisis comes about. Now, are, are you yourself and your team kind of deploying this in different markets or do you have uh, partners in, in different areas that kind of sell it in? Yeah, we have both distribution partners as well as installation and implementation partners in other markets. So we cover the U.S. from New Jersey to Washington State down to California and Florida. So almost all four corners and then a bunch of states in between. So now what does a good partner look like for you guys? Well, somebody that really is, you know, not, not only capable of, uh, of, you know, engaging in a sales process, but that really does have good relationships at the, you know, executive levels within, um, within our customer set. So we tend to sell to the executive team, both from a, you know, at the um, at the security professional level, so that could be a, you know somebody a, a security officer or somebody who's responsible for overall physical security to a customer's facilities, to the executive team, the CFOs and CEOs who are really responsible. They carry the burden of you know protecting those that they um, that they have care over during the day. So now, are those partners? Uh, is this the only thing they're selling, or they're selling uh, other things? And this is now just part of their suite of services that they're offering. 
Yeah, we have some customers that are, uh, or some partners that are either uh, either of those two categories, Lee. So some, it is an exclusive product that they're representing across a broader customer base. And then for some, it's it's one thing in their toolkit um, and they sell other security or other technology components um, to uh, whether it's districts or into corporate. So you mentioned schools are, are obvious, hotels uh I don't know, I guess kind of obvious now because of what happened in Las Vegas, uh, the rehab centers and medical, and you mentioned government, That uh, that's a lot of verticals to be going into simultaneously. How? So is there a priority on that or you're just kind of put a bunch, you know, the offer out to all those folks? Yeah, healthcare is really where we're finding a lot of traction most recently. And again, I think that's driven by, you know, the broader uh, broader market conditions, as well as, you know, they find quite often themselves at the epicenter of, of a lot of the social dysfunction that's happening. So, you know, we do have some customers that we're talking to that are, you know, big urban hospitals that find themselves geographically located in areas where there's a lot more violence happening. And they certainly have an obligation to protect not only their staff members, but their, their patients. So um, that's, I think, probably the next real big uh, greenfield for us. Well, it's a shame that your service is needed. <laughs> but, you know, it's, a, it's really tough. Uh, I mean, it's definitely needed. And it's just, uh, it's a, a shame that so many people in business not only have to worry about doing their business, but also have to worry about this kind of safety issues. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, the way that we say it is we've got a great team assembled and really skilled technologists. We could, we'd love to solve other problems. The reality is this is one that, you know, that needs to be solved and we're applying technology. We know that it saves lives. We've seen incidences of that. And uh, we're really happy to have the opportunity to participate in, you know, making the world a safer and better place through the application of smart technologies. Well, we appreciate you doing the work. Um, it's important work, and it's helping a lot of folks. So if somebody wanted to learn more and have more substantive conversation with you or somebody on your team, what's the website? Centegix.com, C-E-N-T-E-G-I-X.com. And you can find email links to any of the leadership team as well as contact forms out there. So look forward to, uh, to some folks reaching out to us. All right, Matt. Thank you for sharing your story today. Thank you, Lee. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We'll see you all next time on Atlanta Business Radio. And remember, this work would not be possible without the support of our sponsor, OnPay. Please support them so we can continue to share these important stories. Today's episode of Atlanta Business Radio is brought to you by OnPay. Built in Atlanta, OnPay is the top rated payroll and HR software anywhere. Get one month free at OnPay.com.